I am sick of paint. Hey, hello there, Carla here. I have done a bunch of projects in this house since almost a year ago when I did my I'm going to clean out the closet project. I'm getting ready to do a huge one. Um, this is a project that I've been meaning to, to attempt for a really long time. It's one of those really sort of scary do-it-yourself projects, but I'm really motivated. I want to give you a little picture of my before. I live in a little house, as I've said. It's less than 1,100 square feet. The original house, when it was made in the mid-40s, it was made with hardwood floors. Uh, when we moved in and took over the house after some tremendous neglect, we tore up old carpeting. Now I know about the history of the house because this was my grandparents home so I know the process that the house has gone through. The problem is when we tore up the carpeting we discovered um, like at first we were seeing oh wow cool there is a hardwood floor underneath that's great but then we got to where my grandfather had added on to the house and it's a whole different floor there. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, so you can kind of see why we've decided to do what we've decided to do. All right, so what you're looking at right now is the original hardwood floor. They're super worn, scratched up. Um, the finish is awful. And in addition to all the scratches, you see that crisscross pattern there? That is from the original padding that was put under the carpeting and I want to show you hopefully I can find a spot over here if you look at really close see the little little sort of green dots that's still remnants of the original foam rubber padding put down in 1961 that part hasn't gotten worn off because this area right here has been under an area rug for a really long time. One of the things we've procrastinated on <laughs> is making some kind of change to the floor. That's the original oak floorboards. Now let me show you the addition that my grandfather did. Okay, that horizontal 4x4 four four is the original sill of the house. And Grampy added like four feet, three and a half, four feet, but he used six inch redwood slabs there, and it's all a one level. We've got that, and that runs the whole length of this part of the house. We have this living room, dining room combination, and then he also kicked out the, the house another four or five feet you can see right where those yellow narrow boards are that was the original floor and then there's wide boards that look like they're you know they come from like a 200 year old log cabin <laughs> yeah pretty rough not only even if you loved rustic you you end up with things like this mess. So wherever the wood was messed up, Grampy patched it with filler, which is, sorry for the poor lighting quality, but see there, that's old filler. It's all broken up and cracked and falling out. And you can see there's gouges out of the floor. Really a mess. Instead of trying to refinish this floor, which would be a massive and expensive project, and we've talked to professionals about this, we'd have to take out that old redwood uh, flooring addition and somehow match the old oak flooring. It would be insane. It would be as expensive and as time consuming as just laying an entirely new floor and we don't want to spend that much money. So we're going to paint the floor. After going to Asheville, North Carolina and going to the Thomas Wolfe Museum, that's an old Victorian home 
and it has board floors, an old hardwood floor, and it was painted dark brown, and it looked very nice, very uniform. That's what we're going to do with the floor. It's super scary to me. There's a lot of places that need to be mended and fixed. See how, see that nasty spot right there? At some point in, in the floor's history, a big potted plant sat there, and the wood is all messed up. So there's a lot to do to prep. So I'm going to try to remember to keep you updated as I go along so you can see how this painting project worked out. And I'll try to answer as many questions about my process as I can. We've been working for days on this. And there's Miss Pip wondering why she can't go through that screen. This raw wood has just been monstrous to get to the point where we can paint the cracks there's still cracks like that right there there's places where there's super old filler that's crumbling and has to be pried out this disaster is where our entertainment center casters have rolled back and forth back and forth over 20 years on this raw soft redwood and so we just had to skim coat that with wood filler disaster and we're slowly filling in many knot holes so yeah all those little patches and places like that where I have shimmed wide spots in the floorboards I'm gonna also then hit those with filler and with uh, caulking that's dark brown caulking that I've used. We're really close to starting the painting process. A few more small repairs. I'm going to be able to go ahead and hit the raw wood with primer. Once that's done, I'll take my pole sander and I will scuff sand the primer and the semi-finished oak flooring. This was late in 1946 so yeah it's seen better days I did do a few tiny filler repairs you can see those little light areas right there are places where the floor is scratched or dinged or cracked there's not too much there see that little corner right there that's wood filler the floor was pretty much carpeted uh, ever since it, the house was built, so it stayed in pretty good shape. There's a spot right here that my husband is going to uh, do some extra work on. It's a low spot. You can see that little square is the footprint of the original linen closet. So it really stuck out because this is a tiny little hallway and it took up a lot of floor space there. He's going to fix that, so that'll be part of our painting project. So this is the painted part of my floor so far. Let me just swing around here, show you that it goes down there. This actually gives you sort of a side-by-side -side picture of the original 1946 hardwood floor, which, you know, yeah, in a perfect world, let's save the original, but there is no way to describe what bad shape this floor was in and how much it would cost to try to do something like refinish it to try to match it. It was going to be a beastly job. Here we are. Um, we have too small a space to do the entire floor at once. That would be heavenly to have a completely empty room. But this is two coats. No two and a half coats of dark brown 
porch and floor paint. It was two coats plus a third plus some little touch-ups. And this is also one coat of water-based polyurethane. You can see that I've got some... <laughs> Let's see that little, uh, yeah, the, those patches that are sort of dull. That's where, you know, I just, it was really thin when I was putting it on and you can't really see. Uh, but I'm putting on at least two more coats. So that's how it's looking so far. There is at least, despite the damage underneath the floor and all the funky seams and all that stuff, there is at least cohesion between the old the original floor, the add-on floor, and once we get all our furniture on there um, and, and whatnot, it's going to look a hundred times better than it did before. I still have the rest of the house, the rest of the living room, which you can see is filled with my furniture, and my hallway and someday my bedroom. And yeah, that's where we are so far. We now begin phase two of the great floor painting project. This is the hallway. That's where we're working on the one big repair on this section of floor, and it's just about level. Here's our living room. It has now been emptied of furniture. And everything is pushed onto the finished painted part of the floor. Uh, it's taking a light beating. Mostly right now it's just kind of dirty. I've reconciled myself to the understanding that once the whole floor is finished and all the pieces are back where they belong, I will then just simply have to repair uh, the parts that got dinged up and whatnot. But we're close. This part of the floor is going to just be so much simpler and so much faster because there's just not very much repair or priming to be done before I paint. Okay, so here we are. Um, the floor is prepped, repaired. Um, there was a little, maybe a little more repair on the old oak floor than I thought until I got down on my hands and knees. Always fun. And that light colored stuff you see that looks sort of grayish, purplish, tan, that's primer that was mixed with brown floor paint. And then in the hallway, you can see we had that major repair that had to be done in front of the closet and that's all primed up. So I have steamed it. I have sanded the edge of the previous painting and I am ready to cut in and get the first coat rolled on. Woohoo! Here we have the first full base coat completed on the second half of the living room floor project. Um, there are spots where it looks darker and of course that's where the early primer went down. Uh, next step will be in about an hour I can put on the main full coat and I like to do that with a brush by hand rather than a roller. I can lay a heavier smoother coat of paint and probably after that, other than maybe a couple of little spots that need to be touched up, um, we'll be able to start on the poly coat, the first poly coat, maybe tomorrow. So, very small light at the end of a very long tunnel. Hey, good afternoon. So, I thought I'd make a little video segment to go along with all these big project videos to have a little bit of a reality check. So here I am. I've got my two bandanas on. 
which I don't really like to do. It's not comfortable, but my hair is long and silver, and I'm painting my floor dark brown. I've discovered that long silver hairs have a way of falling when you least expect it into floor paint and, or polyurethane and then drying like that. Actually, I only had one do that, one of the really long hairs on my head. And I'm going to have to, to get it out. It's in one of the first layers of polyurethane and it won't come out unless I dig it out. But I have a bunch of little repairs that are going to have to happen on this floor. And here's how I'm feeling right now. This isn't all like, I'm so gung-ho every minute and I'm just like muscling through and stuff. Right now I feel super over it. This, all these projects. I am sick of paint. I am sick of the smell of paint and polyurethane. I would rather cut off a limb than crawl around on my old hands and knees anymore. My feet hurt, my legs hurt, my back hurts, my elbows, my arms, my hands all hurt. Sometimes it feels like every single project is two steps forward, one step back. I get something done, I work really hard to be meticulous and get it done right, and I discover something that got forgotten or bumped or scratched or whatever. And I'm not trying to be a perfectionist. I'm just trying to get the work done properly so it'll be done and I can just simply enjoy it. But right now, as you may be able to tell, I'm super tired. I'm super crabby. I'm sick of this stuff. I want this floor thing done. Ah, I'm so tired of it. I just want it done. So I just thought I'd make a video about how exhausted and tired and crabby I am right now. While I have the second layer of polyurethane drying, I've been out in the garage scraping and stripping and sanding and spackling my bedroom door. All the doors in the house, you know, really old, old house. God knows how many layers of paint on these doors. And they've cracked over time, so that's another huge job. And every little job, it's like, well, I start to do this, and then it turns into a bigger job than I thought, so then I have to do that. And now this is, that door's been out in the garage for a week. I've worked on it every single day. Unbelievable amount of paint. Unbelievable amount of work just to get it so that it's smooth-ish and primed and ready for paint or hang back up in the doorway. Then I have two other doors in that hallway. One to my office, one to the bathroom that really need attention. I don't know when I'm ever going to write. I'm either going to have to write and not work on house projects or work on house projects and not write or figure out how to pace my house projects so that I do some each day and write each day. I hate this. This is why I put things off. This isn't even a matter of perfectionism taking over. It's, you know, sometimes it's a matter of do it right or do it really half-assed and have it not look good when you're done. And I, I'd like to have it look decent when I'm done, like the door. It's going to have high gloss paint on it. And if I just leave it all chipped up and rough, that's going to show under the high gloss paint. The paint will reflect off the mess underneath. So I'm not trying to get it perfect, but I'm trying to get it decent looking. So anyway, I'm really tired. I'm really, all I want to do is take a nap, take a bath, eat cherries and read a book and hire someone else to do all this crap. Blah, I hate it. Okay, that's all from here. Bye bye. Here is the living room floor with two and a half coats of brown floor paint, porch and floor, and the first coat of satin gloss polyurethane, water-based. We shall see, as you can see, those white streaks, that's what it looks like when it's still really wet. And I do my best <laughs> with the applicator to, you know, smooth it out and work fast and like not push down hard and all those things that you're supposed to do and not do. Over there is where the, the first floor 
refinish part meets the new part. I have a hunch that once I get this coated with two more coats of poly, I know I've got some touch-up, repair-y kind of things to do. Huge difference though. I'll take another quick picture of this after this dries so that you can see the difference and how very clear it will look when we're done. I just finished putting down the third and probably final coat of polyurethane on this second half of the floor project. I've gotten to the point, <laughs> I think I made that clear in my last video, that I, I'm really over this project, but I'm super happy that's done. I'm looking right in the center of my screen, and you know what I see? I see a hair. I see a hair in a, in a puddle of polyurethane. Yeah, that's... <laughs> uh, yeah, that's going to drive me nuts. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to wait till this dries, and I'm going to have to dig it out, and, and then put a little fix-it coat, because otherwise it'll drive me nuts. Ah, uh, yeah. Can you tell I'm really looking forward to having this part done? I am. Just it looks just like it did last time I did a video like this where you can see you can see dried spots, wet spots, white spots. Those are the really wet spots. There's a a thick line over there where I should have thinned it out more. Much tougher project to do by myself than one might think. Once you pour the polyurethane on the floor and start coating the floor, it's a get her done kind of a situation. If I had to do this again, I would get uh, like the big squeegees that professionals use to move the polyurethane across the floor. I was using uh, like a fuzzy sponge applicator on a pole, which was not too bad, but the control over the thickness of your strokes is sort of lacking. One way or the other, this floor is 100% better than it was. It was pretty horrible before, and I think once it's all done, and we get all the furniture back and everything, we start living our life again. <laughs> I'm going to be super glad I did this. It's just right now I'm, I'm tired. The baseboards, I don't know if it's possible to see in this video, they're very um, chewed up looking. That paint, it has taken a beating. It's, it was put on there almost 20 years ago. And because of particular circumstances in my life, I had to do the floor before I redid the baseboards. So that's my next big project. And I'm going to have to be super meticulous when I prime and paint those and sand. Sand, prime, paint, because... Otherwise, I'll ruin my brand new floor. It's going to be fun. Anyway, progress. Look at those pretty window treatments. Look at those pretty walls. Look at that pretty ceiling. Look at those pretty flat black fan blades. Things are looking good. We're getting there. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw and you'd like to see more from me, I do invite you to subscribe. And until then, enjoy the good stuff. See you next time.